Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to be showing you how to draw from a reference while using something called a grid system. Uh, there are a few ways to work from references, obviously one just looking at it and drawing it, but if you want more accurate representation, if you haven't quite gotten to the skill level that you want to be at, this is a really good starting place. So with a grid system um, it's going to help us break down the image into smaller pieces. I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase, like if you get overwhelmed with something, just break it down. So when you have a big task, think about it in terms of little chunks instead of one big whole image. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. I have this photograph of Eddie Redmayne here. He's got a really interesting face, so I thought I should draw him. Um, what I'm going to do is just break down this image into one inch boxes. So it's not quite eight inches long, so what I think I'm actually going to do is break this down into a smaller piece. So this is just a bunch of negative space that's not really necessary. So I think I'm going to turn this into a seven inch wide grid. So I'm going to line up my ruler and just make some little tick marks at every inch. You could do this at half inch sizes or quarter inch if you have a really small image or a really detailed image. I'm going to start with the one inch tick marks just to get moving and then if I need to I can break it down smaller. When you're doing the tick marks on the other side of your image it's really important that you start on the same place where you begin or where you did your first one. So um, for example like I lined up the seven with this edge. So I need to do the same thing over here otherwise my grid is not actually going to be square. So if I started right here and made tick marks then the lines wouldn't show up in the right spot. Uh, so it's really important that you do the exact same thing on the opposite sides as you did on the first. So now that I have my tick marks, I can connect my lines. All right, and remember, we aren't going to do this one. So I'm just going to remind myself that I'm not doing that by scribbling it out. Now I'm going to measure going the other direction. So if I line up my ruler here, I see it's about four and a half inches. So I'm still going to make tick marks for every one inch. But with it having a half inch at the end, I'm going to have to do a little bit of math. I know, math, but you'll get over it. There are uses for math and art. You'd be really surprised. I just used the Pythagorean theorem the other day to measure out how my rocket ship is going to fit in the gallery when I set up my exhibit. Yeah, so that was some serious math going on. I'm kind of excited that I remembered how to do that and remembered that the Pythagorean theorem is actually a thing. So pretty proud of myself on that one. Now I'm connecting the lines again, or the tick marks to create lines. So you can see I'm starting to get a box grid going on. Okay, now I have a grid on here and we said it was seven inches by four and a half inches. So that's the original size. Now I could you do a grid on this second sheet of paper at the exact same size or I could enlarge it and that's what's awesome about grids is we can make things bigger or smaller with math. So I think I might want to either double this or maybe do like one and a half times. So um, if I wanted to double the scale of this, so remember scale is, you know, comparing one thing to another in terms of size. Um, so if I wanted to double the scale, all I would have to do is multiply these numbers by two. So this would give me 14 by nine, I believe. Okay, 
that might be too big. Maybe I want to do seven by four and a half times, maybe just one and a half times as big. So we'd multiply everything by one and a half. This would give me 10.5 by 6.75. Now I can choose which one I want to do. Um, let's see, this paper is 12 by 18. So why don't we do the 14 by 9? What I'm going to do first is label these. Um, think about it like battleship. It's going to help us in the long run. So we'll do letters on the top, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, and we'll do numbers down the side. One, two, three, four, five. So just like battleship or chess, I could say I'm working on F2 and then kind of figure out where I am from there. So we're going to transfer the grid onto the big paper and we are going to enlarge it by two. So instead of drawing a tick mark every one inch, I'm going to be drawing a tick mark every two inches. Okay, now what I'm going to do is measure my 14 inches across and make my tick marks. And I'm making my tick marks every two inches now instead of every one inch because we're enlarging our scale by two inches. And now, just like I did up at the top, I need to make sure my ruler is lined up in the same position that it was at the bottom. So my ruler ends at the 16 inch mark at the end of my paper. So that's where I am going to start up at the top as well. And I will make my tick marks across. Now, when we draw the grid on this paper, we're going to need to do it a lot more lightly than we did on our reference photo because we're going to have to erase this grid. So draw it light because you are going to be getting rid of it. Okay, so we have our 14 inches wide. Now we need to do our nine inches tall. So again, every two inches, we will make a mark. Now, this is what's very important. So remember, we had the half inch square down here on the bottom. So we need to make sure that we have that same short square at the bottom of this paper. Otherwise, well, I mean, I guess we could flip the paper upside down, but you need to make sure that you know that you did that right away. So what I'm going to do is Remember we're going times two, so that bottom square on the first one was half an inch. So this one will be one inch. So I made my one inch mark. Then I'm going to go back to two inches for everything else. So then we have a proportional scale change just like we had on the original one. So again, we'll start with the one inch tick mark here and then up to two inches to make sure everything is the same. Then we will lightly connect our lines again. We're going to label or letter and number our image. So obviously if your letters and numbers do not match from photograph to bigger grid, then you probably messed up somewhere on the measuring. So make sure everything lines up before you get started. Otherwise, you're going to have a very distorted image, unless that's what you're aiming for. But in this case, we're aiming for accuracy. Now we can get started. So the first thing that we do when we're comparing our grid is to just focus on one square at a time. So, I mean, we have a lot of negative space going on where it's just shading. So we're not going to focus on that. That's not important. What is important is where the figure is on the plane. So 
I'm used to drawing without a grid, and sometimes when I get really excited, I want to challenge myself. So I turn everything upside down and draw it upside down for an extra challenge. Um, I won't do that in this video, just so that you can kind of see things right side up. I don't want you to get disoriented. Um, so let's start with his jacket. So the line attaching here. So we see that that is in E5 is where it starts. So we're going to find E5 here. And we're just going to look at this one box. So where does this line show up in the box? It looks like it's about two thirds in. So if we were to like divide this box into thirds, the line is two thirds in. So if we did the exact same thing here and kind of lined it up, we've got two thirds in. Um, I'm going to draw this really lightly because again, like if we look, that's actually white. So we're going to kind of leave an open space there. And we're going to follow this up into E4. And we see that this line starts to curve. So if we look, there's kind of this connection point right here where these two lines come up. So I'm going to kind of follow that shape over and across. And I'm looking at the shape that is created between the grid and where the shoulder piece meets. And there's kind of this rounded trapezoidal sort of shape going on. So the key thing about working with a grid like this is that we're breaking everything down into shapes. So what sort of shapes are created by the intersection of these lines and edges? What sort of shapes does the negative space make? So following this, there's sort of a curvy shape going on here. And uh, now I'm just kind of checking the negative space to see if it makes the same sort of shape that I have in my drawing. So that seems about right. Um, I'm just going to keep moving up. So now I see there's sort of a triangle created here between these two areas. And this is just above the halfway point of the box. So I'm going to find the halfway mark and note that this ends just above halfway where it connects. There's a little more of a curve right here before it turns into the triangle. Now I see there's another triangle created in the shadow where the neck of, or the collar of his jacket comes up. And it kind of comes to a point up here. And here's a great tip. When you are working in an area where it starts to get more complicated, so where there are a lot of things happening, you can take your ruler and you can divide everything down in half again. So I could take this and measure every half inch. I could even move to every quarter inch if there were a lot of things happening here. And then I will do the same going up and down. And if I did that here, I'm going to have to do it here. So I'm at E3. I will measure across and do this every one inch. And remember, draw these grids lightly so that you can erase them. All right, now I have a better sort of grasp of where things should be in this square. So looking closely, I see the edge of his collar falls about halfway right here, and then comes out just a little bit past this line. Then we start to see his neck coming out just below the halfway point. 
and his chin comes up. And just like we did with the grid, we want to draw everything else lightly as well, so that in case there are any inconsistencies, then you can erase them and make any changes. So working this way with a grid is quite different from how I normally work, especially with portraiture, um, because as you can see, I'm starting from the bottom and moving up, and I'm not starting with the head or the face. So it's kind of jarring to actually work a little bit differently like this. Um, I would say working this way is a great way to gain sort of a sense of space and where things are in space and a sense of proportion. Um, so how big everything is compared to other parts of the body. Um, so I think that there are merits to working this way, especially like if you're still learning and figuring out how everything works on the body and, and just kind of understanding spatial concepts, like where everything sits in space, this is a really good idea. However, I feel like sometimes drawing from a grid can make things appear kind of lifeless. Um, so, you know, you can start to take your own liberties and make changes as you go along. You aren't really forced to work inside the box like we are right now. Um, but this is just a good way to gain skills in terms of like understanding things visually and where stuff falls on the picture plane. So um, what I am going to start doing here is working on the mouth. So even with something like this, I could divide my square up into quarter inches. I'm just going to eyeball it here. So you can divide this grid up as small as you want to ensure accuracy. So I see that the bottom of his lip is very close to this edge. So I'm just going to kind of mark that space. There's this nice dark shadow here. So when it comes to the shadows, I'm just kind of sketching out where the edges of the shadows lie. I'm not really shading them in yet. I'm just giving myself a, an idea of where they are. And that's because I have to erase this entire grid. So it would be kind of ridiculous of me to draw and shade everything and then be like, oh no, I have all these random lines in here that I have to erase and so I end up erasing half of my shading. Don't do that. That's a waste of time. So just kind of lightly sketch in where everything is going. If I am going for an angle and I can't quite find that angle, I can use my pencil as a tool to find that angle. As long as everything's level, I can just take that and slide it over to kind of see where that angle is. I'll talk more about angling like I'm doing in another video about sighting and angling, which is another way of drawing representationally. So seeing that angle kind of helps me figure out what direction his mouth is going. I'm just going to speed things up here while we work, and we'll come back to talking about it in a minute. Okay, so I'm at a point where I have kind of everything blocked in with just some light contour lines. So what I'm going to do now is just erase my grid and then I can start putting in values. All 
All right, so I've got my grid erased. It's okay that I erase some of these lines because obviously we're going to go back in and start adding values. So it's really easy to just plop whatever I erased back in. Not a big deal. So if you accidentally erase things that you didn't want to, don't worry about it. It's fine. We're going to leave this drawing here for right now, and in the next video I'm going to talk about adding in values with this drawing. So thank you for watching, make sure to stay tuned for the next installment of Drawing with a Grid, and thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing!